Okay, so in this video we're going to look at an important result um, known as the squeeze theorem. Uh, so the squeeze theorem makes the following assumptions, right? It assumes that you've got three functions, they're all defined on some open interval, i, and somewhere in the interval we have this point c. And we know two more things. We know that for every x in this interval, g of x is always in between f of x and h of x, right? So f of x is always smaller, h of x is always bigger, right? Um, you could probably go a little bit further and, and allow situations where, where things reverse themselves as long as it's always the case that g of x is in the middle, okay, between the other two. Uh, the other assumption we make is that these two functions on the outside, they have the same limit at this point c. Um, so with those assumptions, we can conclude that this function in the middle, g of x, has the same limit as the other two. Okay? Um, now, this result is it's a pretty intuitive result. If we wanted to, there is a way to come up with an epsilon delta proof of this result, but I don't think we need to go that far. Um, most people are more or less convinced when they look at a picture explaining what's going on. Um, so the scenario here is that you've got some, some interval. So let's say i, i runs from there to there, okay? And we've got these three functions. So somewhere in that interval is c, okay? Now, we've got this function g of x, and we're interested in the limit of g of x at c. <coughs> and maybe we, we don't know as much as we would like about this function g of x, but we do know that it's between these two other functions, f and h. And f happens to be a function which is always less than g of x, and at this point c, does something like that. h of x is a function that's always bigger than g of x. Okay? And again, at that point c, it approaches the same value. So there is this point here in the middle where the three curves, they all come together, right? At this common value which is L, right? So the idea is, is fairly straightforward, right? If, if the red and blue curves here, they're both approaching the same Y value at C, and the green curve is stuck in between them, sandwiched in between, squeezed in between, if you like, um, then it must be approaching the same Y value at that point as the other two. Um, that's all that the squeeze theorem is saying. Um, Applying the squeeze theorem can be a little bit tricky because usually what happens, right, is that in, in practice you're, in, you're dealing with a situation where you are interested in proving that this function g of x, the one in the middle, you want to show that this function has a particular limit at that point and you don't have enough information to conclude immediately that your function has the limit that you're interested in. Um, but sometimes what you can do is you can construct these two other functions whose limits you know that kind of squeeze the function you're interested in in between them, right? Um, and the hard part about using the squeeze theorem is you've got to come up with those functions. You've got to figure out what f's going to be. You've got to figure out what h is going to be. And, and, and this usually requires a little bit of, of creativity or inspiration to come up with these functions and figure out what you should do. Um, the good news is that you won't see too many problems involving squeeze theorem in this course. In fact, the main reason that we introduced the squeeze theorem is the squeeze theorem is going to allow us to establish some basic limit facts about trig functions, right? Um, right now, we kind of know how to handle all the, you know, polynomial functions, rational functions, root functions. Um, 
we, we kind of, we accept without proof uh, limit facts about exponential and logarithmic functions, but um, we, wanna, we wanna see why things work for the trig functions as well. Uh, so we're gonna use the squeeze theorem to prove a few facts about sine, cosine, and, and also we're gonna come back to that, that limit that we sort of let off with, you know, back in one of the very first videos, that sine x over x limit that was sort of mysterious. We're pretty sure the value is one, but we can't quite prove it. We're gonna see how to show that using the squeeze theorem.